Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from bitemout.com, bitemoutlive.com, and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is November 26th, the day after Thanksgiving. And I hope all of you had a great holiday. Those of you who are here in the States, that you celebrate it. And uh, we did. We had uh, my two youngest sons came over, and later in the day, some friends showed up, and uh, we had a great day. The weather was nice and uh, very, very relaxing. Good. It was good to have family around. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about this week was, before I get into the regular part of the video, is that I, I, I've gotten a number of emails, um, I think mainly because I'm home right now for the, for the time being. Um, uh, and uh, they, people ask, say, well, you know, what do I collect? What's my view on collecting? And, and, and I've been doing it for a long time. And uh, I, I learned early on that one of the interesting things is, is that if you're a collector and a dealer, you're in that wonderful position of <clears throat> when you go to auctions, for example, or you, you go out to see things at estates that are for sale, uh, you can go in with two hats and you could wear your... Um, you can put on the hat where I'm going to buy it and sell it and, and make, make a living, or maybe there are going to be some things I'm going to want to keep. And uh, I think that if you're a dealer in, in art, you have to also be a collector to be a good dealer. Um, I, I know dealers. I know do, dealers that uh, have no antiques in their houses at all. If you walked into their house, you'd have no idea what they did for a living because it's strictly a business. And I think they're missing out on something. I've always been surprised by that. I once knew the, a guy who was the head of the rug department of a major auction house. And I asked him, I said, what kind of rugs do you collect? And uh, he said, I don't own one. <laughs> it's just for him, it was just strictly an academic business enterprise. Uh, it's, just, it's just the way it is. But for me, I've always collected. Uh, I, I've, I've collected more than Chinese things. That we, we, my wife and I, we collected things from Italy, American furniture, so forth, um, all kinds of things. But one of the things I thought would be fun to talk about would be a painting that I bought a number of years ago uh, and why I kept it. And it was part of a collection that was being sold up in Blue Hills, Maine, way, way up near Deer Island. And I heard about this sale. I got word of it that it was going to happen on a Saturday. It was in the spring of 2007. And I thought I'd better take a ride up there because some very good estates come out of that area. Um, uh, some old, old New England families had big estates up there, um, a lot of wealth summertime people and so forth and uh, I took the trip up and I was not disappointed the place was full of stuff and one of the things that I bought was this painting and uh, some of you may recognize it right away I'll zoom it in a little bit and uh, this this auction took, was taken took place in a schoolhouse up there um, because they would rent the schoolhouse out, out from time to time um, uh, you know to raise a little money for the community they had like a community area and uh, they, they did it in the theater, actually, at the school, sort of a community theater thing. And they did it from, there was a stage and it was, a very, you know, a classic New England scene. And um, in, in there were, were a number of very, very fine uh, Chinese objects, um, uh, some very good, really great porcelain, uh, a couple of good Qinlung vases, Mark and Period. Uh, there was a, a dragon robe, um, a great dragon robe, all kinds of things. And this scroll... And some of you recognize it, uh, or recognize the style of the work, is done very much in the manner of um, 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 uh, 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 Giuseppe Castiglione, also known as Lang Xining. And um, uh, this, this particular uh, painting, this one with the rabbits in it, was the original was done by an acolyte of, of uh, Giuseppe Castiglione named uh, Mei Ling, who lived in the 18th century. And he, a follower of, of Giuseppe Castiglione. And the painting that Mei Ling did is now in the National Palace Museum collection. It's a very, very uh, famous painting. And um, this painting was there. And um, uh, it, was, it, was, it was struck me. I, I, I ran, ran over to the thing and I, went, I couldn't believe it. And um, it's, it's not by um, Mei Ling, but it's by a 20th century artist who's quite famous. Uh, name uh, uh, Mei Lin, Mei Jin, excuse me, Ma Jin, and um, uh, was born in eight, uh, 1899, died around 1970, and was active primarily between uh, the 1920s and in the, in the mid-late 1940s. And uh, this painting was in that collection, and it absolutely knocked me out. Uh, it's a wonderful painting. And uh, it wasn't framed at the time. It was just hanging on its scroll. I had it framed. The mat, the, the original matting is behind here. I just had it covered when I had the mat put on. 
but an absolutely wonderful, wonderful uh, painting and uh, loaded with detail. And uh, if, you, if you check the, uh, the, the, uh, the one that was done um, originally, this is the one by uh, Le, uh, Leng Mei, which is in the uh, Palace Museum collection. And it's interesting because here, here you see the rabbits paired under, it's under a Wutong tree. And um, here it goes left to right. And in this one, it goes right to left. He just reversed it, he mirrored it, which is sort of an interesting treatment. But I absolutely loved this painting. I love the way the rabbits were depicted. It's signed and all that other good stuff. It's absolutely authentic. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, um, a friend of mine in a, in a museum got a hold of Nancy Berliner and asked her to uh, to look at it uh, a number of years ago, 15 years ago, when I bought it, and uh, agreed that it was it was authentic and, and by the artist and so forth. And uh, I think I, I bought the painting at the time. I think I paid about $1,000 for it. And I uh, had it framed under museum glass, and I think the framing ended up costing about about six or seven hundred, but it was worth it. It's a wonderful picture, and uh, today his his pictures are uh, have done very well. If you want to look, you can you can look them out online. Some um, one of his paintings sold uh, just recently for about seven hundred thousand Hong Kong, uh, which is a, a significant increase over the last sixteen years. But uh, I'm not selling it. I just I, but it's something I bought because I absolutely loved it. And uh, it's hung in my uh, dining room now for uh, um, since I got it. It's been here for a long, 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 long time. At some point, it's going to have to come out of the frame and get flattened here because it's, it's starting to crinkle up a little bit just from uh, the climate here on the coast. We do our best to keep humidity and moisture out, but there's not much you can do about it sometimes. And it can cause little wrinkles in, in, in the silk. So we'll get that squared away at some point. But at any rate, that's the story behind it. So I went to the auction and I bought a great deal of stuff and um, uh, sold all but this piece. And uh, um, it's, it's sort of a nice way to be able to do things if you're a dealer, because you you can you can sort of support your own interest in collecting habits and, uh, 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 and, and, and make a living. So at any rate, that's the story behind one thing that we have here around the house. And uh, uh, it'll be here for a long time, I suspect. Okay, now moseying on over to the uh, regular. Uh, it's interesting. One of the one of the paintings by well, I should I should mention too is that one of the paintings, whoops, one of the paintings um, by um, um, this artist uh, was donated by Robert Hatfield Ells Ellsworth uh, to the uh, Metropolitan Museum when he died. He was a 20th century. He collected, he collected, he dealt heavily in Ming furniture. He's known as, as that, the King of Ming, after all, um, the longtime dealer in New York. But he also bought and loved 20th century Chinese paintings. And uh, among the paintings he donated to the Met was a, a, a painting by this artist, um, which I, I found out um, um, after I bought this. I didn't know it at the time, but uh, it was sort of an interesting adjunct when, when a lot of things were being published about uh, Robert Ellsworth. Okay, now. What else is going on? Uh, oh, catalogs. Um, we were able to get the software all squared away on the computers here at home for um, getting some catalogs generated. And we've added five this week to the uh, research section over on bitamount.com. Um, you know where it is. So if you come over here and you go down to uh, books and catalogs right here, reference section, brings you over here. And uh, let's close that up. There it is. And uh, there are five bottoms catalogs in here, including one in Sydney. And uh, some pretty nice looking sales. They're coming up in the next few days on the second, about a week. Um, is, is find, find Chinese works of art. Uh, these are all in Hong Kong. Um, the, uh, images of devotion, some great bronzes in here. Uh, and then over here, co color and impact. This is also in Hong Kong. This is a, if you're a Chinese cloisonne guy or gal and you love cloisonne, Check this catalog out. It's all cloisonne, all kinds of Ming and Qing cloisonne. It's about, I don't know, 80 examples, something. Some wonderful examples, but this is going to be a reference catalog. You'll be able to use this, bookmark this, save it. It's one of these catalogs that in the future I think people will go back to over and over and over as a reference uh, because it's got so many examples in it. And it's a very interesting, uh, very, very interesting uh, catalog, especially for the cloisonne collector. You know, if you have an interest in it, you're going to want you're going to want this catalog, okay? And of course, you can you can get it. Any, it'll be on the in the bookshelf uh, forever here. All right. And then last is elegant gatherings, the social art of Chinese scholars. 
This is a nifty auction, um, uh, musical instruments. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's to do with uh, the accoutrements and objects uh, related to social interactions and culture and all that. It's a very interesting twist on an auction, and that's going to happen on December 2nd. All these sales are happening around December 2nd and 3rd, um, but nice-looking auctions. Nice-looking auctions, good photography, not overblown, not too many, not, you know, 400 lots. These are, a number of them only have 60 or 70 lots in each auction, but there's some very, very sweet pieces in there and uh, uh, really worth uh, checking out. All right, so uh, do that. So now we're, we're able to generate catalogs here at the house um, uh, so we could, didn't have to worry about trying to get them done down at the office while I'm stuck at home. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention too was we also got the uh, software and everything squared away for updating um, the uh, global member pages. Um, unfortunately, because of uh, circumstances here, I wasn't able to get to them uh, and get that done for uh, a couple of weeks. It was driving me crazy. I felt guilty as I'll get out about it. And we finally got to it and we were able to get the connections and the things that we needed to make those links and uh, all set. It's been kind of a busy week around here. So we, we got that out of the way. All right, so I'm, I'm glad to get those pages updated. We've got the, uh, the Rob Michael sales now on there, a whole bunch of other auctions, and we'll be updating it again tomorrow, uh, first thing in the morning. Okay, so that brings us around, of course, to uh, the uh, newsletter page. <clears throat> if you don't subscribe to the newsletter page you, you, and, you, and you're, you buy on any regular basis on the Internet, check it because each week we put things in here that we've um, found over on eBay that we think are good. Um, and, um, and uh, one of the things we've made a little bit of change on the page, a number of you noticed, um, uh, we have um, removed um, uh, uh, the, the Catawiki listings off the bottom of the page for the time being. Um, uh, we, 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 a lot of people, were, they, you know, they like to buy and collect, but we're having some, you know, some issues with Catawiki and uh, uh, the, the cost, the fees, and so forth, and there was a, a rapid, dec sudden decline in um, listings on there, and I, I just thought, well, maybe we should just not bother anymore. All right, um, if, if they, they, they get their act together, maybe we'll, we'll do something. But anyway, what we did was we, we actually selfishly, <laughs> admittedly, um, we replaced it with our own stuff from the uh, Bit Amount Live pages. And we're going to be start adding that, that sort of these, these items here are on the Bit Amount Live page. And we're going to start uh, adding more and more of them, the things that we, we just see that look interesting. We're going to add them in as they come along. All right. And you can, of course, go there and, and shop as well. All righty. So those are the little changes that we've done. Not too much. Not too much. Just a few changes. Um, and uh, we're going to move forward from here. Now, what happened over on eBay last week? Well, as we talked about, there were a number of good things, a couple of good, very good things closing also coming this week. Um, and they will be in the newsletter page. And uh, we'll have the page updated on Friday, as we always do. But one of the things that we had talked about last week was this very nice soapstone grouping, um, probably uh, late 18th or early 19th century with these beautifully done soapstone carvings with pigments, and the complete and the, and the complete uh, setup, the like the the the, uh, the plinths and all that are intact, and the Kuan Yin sitting on a lotus base and all that material, all complete, and it was it was in very nice condition and beautifully polished, and in the end it did quite well. We thought it would. We talked about it and uh, ended up selling for twenty three hundred and twenty nine dollars, which was a good price, but well worth it, I think. All right, well worth it. And uh, also sold was this. I, I, this is a, a very nice thing. I, I included this. I don't include a lot of jewelry all the time in the newsletter page. I, I do if I happen to like it. But I thought this was a very elegant man's ring, a very, very attractive ring with a nice piece of uh, uh, jadeite in it and varying colors. And uh, this is a, a nice hand hand-worked ring. You can tell by looking at it. It's all handmade, um, uh, uh, beautifully done. Uh, here it is. It's marked on the inside, and uh, it apparently, uh, according to the seller, tested out as 22 carat gold, um, which is a very high carat carat rate for gold. Usually, gold jewelry is 14 or 18 in the West. In China, they 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 get high 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 high, high carats, uh, 22, 24 carat, very very soft. Uh, but it, on the other side, when you have gold that soft, it polishes beautifully. And this sold for $1,920, but an absolutely elegant looking gentleman's ring. Just beautiful. Very masculine ring. I liked it. And uh, on to this. This, I think, somebody got a great buy. And I don't know why. I, I think this was the, a, a relative bargain of, of the month. 
All right, a very nice late Yuan Ming Dynasty vase, bronze vase uh, with, with dragon heads and ring handles, ring loops and so forth. And uh, these typically sell, uh, you know, in the 1800 to $3,000 range. And I mentioned last week, I, I, they, they did show comps of a pair, a pair that were a bit finer that brought, I think, 15 or 20,000. Uh, this, this was a nice bronze. And I think maybe because it looks so clean, it held back the price. I don't know. Um, um, it looked like maybe the, the seller had put, uh, maybe put a, just gently oiled it or something, which is fine. It doesn't hurt anything. There are London dealers that oil bronzes all the time. Um, Michael Goodwies is famous for doing it because he, he thinks it brings up the color. But at any rate, um, this is a really nice uh, uh, early bronze. And uh, somebody picked this up for a bargain, $610. You know, I haven't said it in a while, but leave a bid. Leave bids. You know, you see things like this, you think, oh, it's going to bring 1500 to 2000 bucks. That's a bit, I'd pay 1000 but I'm not paying 1500 And somebody picked it up for 610 And that was sort of a bargain, in my opinion. Um, uh, should, have, should have done quite a bit better than that. But that's, that's the auction market. And, uh, and it was excellent collect, um, condition with no cracks or restoration. All right, so there you go. And then over to this, this very, very pretty little Daosai uh, decorated uh, cup uh, and when they, where they did the decorations inside of fans and little cloud form cartouches with script on the back of it. This was a very attractive cup. It appears to be 18th century, and it's, a, and it's, it's signed with the Yutang Jai Ji mark, uh, which makes it fairly rare, and uh, uh, a lot of people liked it. Um, it got a lot of interest right away, and it did very well. It did just great. Brought eleven hundred and fifty dollars, but beautiful condition, nice decoration, calligraphy, and uh, 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 very very prettily painted. It's always important to remember that when you're looking at porcelain, one of the things is if it has the the added element of calligraphy, that's a third art that's added to the piece. It's it, it's they don't view calligraphy. Uh, the connoisseurs of Chinese porcelain don't view calligraphy and landscape painting or figural painting as being the same thing. They view them as two entirely distinct and separate arts. One is calligraphy, one is art, one is painting. Okay, they're, 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 they're separate. So in a piece that has calligraphy and landscapes and is nicely potted, this piece was very, very nicely potted, potted with an unusual mark. Those are all added elements that go into it. So you have nicely potted and shaped, nice landscaping, nice outside enamels also, script, and an unusual seal mark. So that's four, four elements that push towards a stronger price and early. And uh, it did fine. So that's, that's the math behind it. Because you'll see downside cups that don't have calligraphy that can look quite similar from the 18th century. And they bring six or $700. But, another, but when you add the script, it, it really it bumps on about 30 or 40 percent of the value in many, many cases. Sometimes it triples it, depending on who, 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 you know, what, what's, what the script is and what the bowl is or the, or the, or the vase is. Okay, now on to this, the, the Ming, um, uh, little Ming figure that we talked about last week. I thought this was just very, very nice. Nicely done, nice patina. I like the, the way the head is tilted back, sort of a divine smile on the face. Uh, uh, Quite attractive. Uh, here, here the base uh, with, the, with, the, with the foot is where it's pegged into the into the stand, and so forth. And uh, how did it do? It did pretty well at the end. It brought a thousand ninety-two dollars. This was a fairly small bronze. I think it was around four inches tall. All right, but nicely done, nice patina, and uh, sort of an unusual form. Okay, and then over to this the cup and saucer. Um, what made this interesting was. Um, the uh, we'll get this thing to open. There it is. Christie's Nanking Cargo. Uh, this is uh, certainly the type of thing that was in the Nanking Cargo sale that took place back in the uh, in the 1980s. I guess it is. It was a long time ago. Uh, the legendary Nanking Cargo sale. And it's funny because Nanking porcelain things from the Nanking uh, sale. For a, for a while, there was too much of it on the market. And after the auction, the auction did really well. And then the stuff, when it came back on the market, the secondary market, um, post the Christie sale, uh, some of the prices were a little soft. They didn't do all that well. Now there seems to be people who recognize, wait a minute, this is this is sh datable shipwreck material, um, uh, very, very uh, nice quality. And this was a particularly fine cup and saucer, uh, particularly nicely done. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $390. 
um, with the name, but Nanking cargo, good condition, nicely done, 18th century. So um, there you have some value. Okay, and then over here to this, the uh, coral bead necklace, probably Tibetan, but uh, very nice. These are nice, nice bits of coral, nice coral beads. Let's see if we get it to load here. Uh, you know that my house is a little bit slow, I'm afraid to say. Uh, but uh, nice old bit, bits of coral, uh, good looking. This is real cor natural coral, uh, very, very pretty. Love this stuff, it has good weight to it. Um, and, and little color variations, uh, shifts in color and so forth. And these did pretty well. They brought $1,994. This is from uh, hand, ha um, uh, Hannity's, uh, Hannity's Antiques um, down in uh, Staten Island in New York. Good looking string of beads. You felt they were probably Tibetan coral. They weighed 157 grams, which is fairly heavy. All right, and now over to this, the ivory uh, card case. Nice uh, mid-19th century ivory card case, Can Canton, you know, Cantonese workshop stuff. Um, but, but it didn't bring a lot of money because it was being sold in England. And uh, exporting these, shipping these, yikes, you can't do it. So when they turn up, if you're in the UK or you're in a country with, with somebody who might be selling something, it might be you know, impossible, if not you know, illegal to ship. Um, uh, you can get yourself a bargain sometimes. Box went for 290 bucks, which is about half of what they bring typically, um, um, uh, um, you know, for a good one. And this is a good one, um, you know, in other parts of, 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 of the EU and the United States. Because you're sort of, I think you're sort of limited to the UK market on the shipping of this little guy. So um, uh, it ended up bringing, I think, a pretty modest price for what it is. It happens, it happens. And uh, then over here to this, another, this was a very good buy. I don't know what, why this didn't bring more money. I can't understand it. It's a, it almost, I think maybe the, the detail is so good, maybe somebody thought it was modern or something. This isn't, this is a, an 18th century piece of Nanking porcelain. And uh, very nicely done. It had a little glaze imperfections here. But the uh, landscape scene, this, this scene is very crisp, very, very clean, very good dark uh, cobalt. And this is not damage. This is a firing thing that happened. This happened during the firing process. Doesn't appear on the other side, and uh, it is not a repair. It was just sort of a, a, a. This is an unglazed area, so you can get blemishes on unglazed areas. But um, uh, the, the piece is absolutely fine. This very nice arrow and dark border around the inside, very typical of late 18th century porcelains. And somebody picked this up for 180 bucks. That's not a bad deal at all, and it's 41 centimeters, so it's about 18 inches long. All right, so that was a pretty good deal. That was a really good deal for somebody um, being sold um, out of the UK. Um, and I'm a mystery why that went for that. And I think it's, again, a case where people think it's going to bring, they assume it'll bring four or $500, um, but would you have paid 180 bucks for it? Yeah, probably. You know, yeah, I would. I mean, if, you know, I don't, I don't, I can't go around leaving bids everywhere, but this was something, you know, if I was interested in it, I, I w you know, certainly would have left a bid on it. And uh, if you're collecting and you're, you don't have, you know, unlimited funds, these are great things to collect because it's top quality work. And right now the, the market is a little friendly on them for you. All right. Now over here, the Wan Lee uh, garlic neck vase. This did fine. This was a nice old one. It actually brought a little more than I thought it would. Uh, a couple hundred bucks more, and uh, but nicely done. Good looking base on there. That's how the foot should look on this thing. Slightly rusticated. Here's another angle of it. Good photography. Whoever took these pictures. Nice and crisp and clear. Very typical decoration. Uh, I liked it with a figure on it, and it did well. It ended up selling for twenty five hundred and ninety seven dollars. I think last week we talked about it and thought it would bring eighteen hundred to twenty two or so hundred. Uh, went a little over that, which you know. Estimates are always hand grenades anyway, but uh, nice looking vase, nice looking vase. And it was in good condition. A lot of time those things are broken. And then back to another great, I, I'm pointing these out because I think these are such good deals. This was a, one of the bargains of the week too. This was a really good deal. This is again, an 18th century Chinese export platter with floral sprays all over it, nicely done. This was a, a, not a big one. This one was, I think about 10 or, 10 or so inches, as I recall. Uh, 25 centimeters, yeah, so about 10 inches. Ended up selling for, look at this, $65. $65, that was an absolutely great buy. That, okay, I mean, that, 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 that's, that's the price of contemporary dinnerware. 
um, this was a really, really good, good piece of porcelain. And again, leave a bid. Okay, it did have a tiny, tiny uh, hairline in the glaze I, he, that he showed, but it would have no impact on the piece at all visually. It was on the back. Who the heck cares? All right, it was a great buy. And um, hold on, I want to go to this one. The pair of shaped rim dishes. These were quite attractive, and they were very, very uh, uh, closely done to one another. Sometimes these these pairs of dishes, they, 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 they get them a little fouled up. The only differences I can see here at all were the, the, the way the mountains were shaded in a few places and slight difference in the placement of the rocks, but the rest of it is all absolutely the same. These were very, very nice looking and with shaped rims. The shaped, shaped edges are always more interesting, always worth a little bit more, and it's a pair. And uh, the two of them went for $414. And these were small. These, these, these were not big plates. These were uh, eight inches each um, in diameter. So they're about the width of a small, the small, small um, luncheon plate. But they're nicely shaped, and they would, and they display well. These things always look nice, well uh, displayed, and these kind of stands on a bookcase or something, because there's a artistic shape to them as well as being nicely painted. All right, and then on to this, the last thing, that, the things that we're going to talk about sold. And we're going to get on to some of these that are coming up that I want to talk about. Um, is this very nifty little foo lion uh, cup? I just like this. It's charming. It's the the, the painting on it isn't particularly fine. But it's, it's, there's a certain something about it that's attractive. The, the, the food lines sort of staring at each other over the silk ball. And then you have the interior with another one, this very bushy, bushy, bushy food line on the inside, just, just, just covered with fur. Just uh, very, very nicely done. And um, ended up doing very well. Sold for uh, $326 for this little cup. But nicely done, nicely undercut uh, foot there. That little V shape slanted to the interior, and um, uh, somebody loved it. Late 18th, I think it's more likely 19th century. He put in late 18th, early 19th. Probably not exactly sure, but I think it's probably early 19th. A nice looking though. It was perfectly fine price, good price. All right, and now what's coming up? One of the things that's coming up is this: the uh, the wine pot we mentioned last week, the teapot, the uh, Jai Ching Markin period uh, teapot. Um, it was at about two bucks, I think, when we put it in there. Um, here's the bottom of it. Looks fine. Uh, nice, nice old piece. And it's now up to uh, $1,222. Closes uh, uh, Saturday. It should do a good bit more. Um, um, it, this should bring uh, three to five thousand dollars pretty comfortably. Um, but it's a, it's a very nice looking pot. I don't see anything wrong with it. These these wine pots are actually pretty rare. They don't turn up very often, and it's a nice small size, five and three quarter inches, six inches tall. Uh, but um, uh, you know, if you go if you go to look up one of these, uh, you're, you're not going to find one. Okay, so because um, I tried, and uh, I know they're around. I've seen them before, but I currently couldn't find one that sold recently. Just wondering how they're doing. But these Jiajing blue and white pieces uh, are, are quite collectible. This is a fairly rare form. It has figures on it, nicely done. Uh, don't be afraid of it. All right, and then also is this, this very provincial sort of a reticulated work, brush pot, bamboo brush pot. This is an old brush pot. Um, eBay, as you know, is just drowning in fakes of brush pots. Um, it's just ridiculous. This is a, this is a, this is a, a late Qing example. Nicely done. It's not super, super fancy, but it's legit. Um, it needs some oil. Somebody, whoever buys this should oil this. This will, the wood on this will come up nicely. I think maybe this bleaching effect here looks like maybe it was in a sunny window at some point in its life. Um, and it looks a little bit faded, but it has calligraphy on it and script down the side, and it is legit. This is an old one. All right, so uh, if you're looking, if you've always wanted to own an old brush pot and you don't have a fortune to spend on it, you might try this one. I suspect it'll go for uh, two or three hundred dollars. Uh, which is perfectly fine. Migalari has this. It's a nice looking little brush pot. All right, I like brush pots. And then just as a reminder, the nodding figures in these stands uh, last week, as I mentioned, um, the, the seller didn't get paid, and uh, which, as you know, annoys me to death. Um, um, uh, these weren't paid for, evidently. Um, and they're back up again. Uh, the, the the nodding figures brought around two or twenty five hundred dollars the first time. The stands brought a little bit more, as I recall, and they should do that again. And if you liked them last time, you left a bid on them last time. Stick to your guns. Go back and bid on these things and and, and help this guy out, this seller. 
Um, uh, I mean, I'm not doing it to help them, but don't don't get yourself psyched out. These often these guys in in in, in certain in Asia and China in particular, they will bid things up, not pay for them, and then wait for you to relist them, hoping to get it you know at a ten or twenty percent, thirty percent discount. Don't give them the discount. Run it right back up to where it should be. Right now, the uh, nodding figures are at about seven hundred and sixteen dollars. Yeah, it's still at seven sixteen. So run that up, and the stands are the stands should do well too. So you know, um, those are nice figures. Also, anybody that buys them, you're never going to regret owning those. Those are cool, and they were quite big, as we recall. As you recall, all right. Also on here, um, I forget. This is one of the regulars. Has this a very nice carved rock crystal brush washer um, water pot? This is a nice one, nice, nice late Ching example from what I can see. It's got lots of legitimate wear, this nice clouding effect, nicely carved in here. Look at the little details, well carved, well polished, um, the, nicely the, the way the lip is carved out, just nicely done all the way around. It's up to $337. It closes on Sunday, should bring, uh, should bring five to 700, I would think. All right, and then this, another deadbeat out there didn't pay for this, that wonderful um, uh, pewter uh, foo line. Why the guy didn't pay for this, I have no idea. It went for seven or $800. This is a great piece of pewter. And if you were looking at it last time and you didn't get it and you got pushed out, here's your chance. This is a nice piece of pewter. All right, I just keep saying that. I mean, you know, pewter is sort of an undervalued market. A lot of people don't go after it because it was most of it was made, a lot of it was made for export out of Swato and so forth. But this is an absolutely charming piece of pewter. Um, just a, a very fine detail, very finely proportioned, good quality, great facial characteristics. It almost looks like the faces of robots from the 1950s and cartoons and so forth. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Um, Anyway, it's up to $150. Last time around, it brought about $800 or so. Um, if you missed it last time, bid on it. It closes Monday. Go in tonight. Leave a bid. All right. This is a nice, nice piece of pewter. And then on to this. This is a curious thing. Um, this is a Chinese export painted pigskin blanket chest. And uh, you do see them. A couple of things about it. One, this is one of the nicest one I've seen in years. This is spectacularly painted, and the paint is all in beautiful condition. Absolutely beautiful condition all the way around. Um, it looks like it's, and it's got a, a very, very nice custom-made stand. And the reason it has a really nice custom-made stand is uh, because of that. A.H. Davenport and Company. And um, uh, it's being sold by a seller here in Massachusetts, out in Western Mass. He's not willing to ship it, but... If you have anybody in the area and you wanted to own a really great pigskin trunk from the 19th century, late Ching, hang on to this. Hang on for a minute. And I'm going to tell you who A.H. Davenport was. A.H. Davenport was a furniture company started in the 19th century in Boston. Started out as the Boston Furniture Company, actually. And then A.H., I think his name was Albert or Alfred Davenport, bought the company when the founders of, of, of the Boston of the Furniture Company died. And he changed it to A.H. Davenport. And A.H. Davenport um, became one of the finest furniture makers, custom interior designers, worked with architects. They worked with McKim Mead and White. They made Teddy Roosevelt's desk. They did the, uh, the uh, what is it, the Leona, Leona Palace in Hawaii for the Kamehameha, King Kamehameha family. Um, they, these guys were at the absolute top of the heap. Um, um, uh, they, they made furniture for uh, up and down the Hudson River Valley. They had a store in New York and just did all kinds of historic buildings. You can look them up on the Internet, find out who A.H. Davenport was. Uh, and and, they, and, and they, they, they merged with um, uh, Irving and Casson. Um, around 1913, and, and you should know where Irving and Casson is if you've been an antique dealer for any length of time, and uh, they also were one of the great companies. But A.H. Davenport was the, was the root system that got made made Irving and Casson what it became, and uh, they had also what a lot of people didn't know was that they were decorators and designers. They had impeccable taste. They had historians who worked for them, and they brought all kinds of cool stuff in from China. Uh, the same way um, um, uh, Gumps did, uh, but higher quality. And, and, and Gumps was good, had good stuff, but this, but H. Davenport was a whole other level, 
whole other level. And uh, they brought in the best of the best. They made the best stuff, um, the superb workshops. And um, this was something they brought in from China, and they put their store mark on it. Same way Tiffany did back in the day. They'd go to France and buy clocks and mark them Tiffany, sell them in New York. This was something they bought in China. And uh, they started with one store in Boston, and eventually they opened a second store in New York. And uh, the company is, is gone now, but uh, left a heck of a legacy. If you want it for fun, go, to, go on the Internet and look up A.H. Davenport. I, I know they have a Wikipedia page. I guarantee it. And... Um, um, this was something that they handled. So it's got an interesting sidebar to it, and it is a great pigskin trunk. Greatly done. Great. Superb quality. And I uh, ended up, it, it is, it is um, up for auction right now. The guy isn't sell, going to ship it. He, he's asking for an opening bid of $950. This is a full-size trunk. This isn't a small box. This is a trunk trunk, 36 by 16, you know, one of those things. Three feet by 16 inches high with a wooden stand. And... Um, he doesn't ship apparently pick up only from Beckett Massachusetts so if you've ever wanted one of these great trunks and you've seen them sell at auctions for fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars for some reason this guy doesn't want to ship it I don't know why um, because they're not that hard to ship we, we, we've, we've shipped much bigger Louis Vuitton trunks all the way to France for a couple hundred bucks um, it can be done but at any rate uh, if you have somebody in the New York area, go by and pick this thing up. He says he'll meet with you. He'll drive some distance to get it to you. Um, you, you might want to throw a bid on this. This is, this is a, a, a very, very nice piece with an interesting history. All right. And then on to this, lastly, is this. This closes tomorrow, and for some reason, it's got had no interest at all. I don't know why. It's a very nice uh, Kesey fragment, a Kesey strip. Um, a very good one, nice one, uh, two, sort of a split scene. Um, uh, these were often made in, in sets of four, but fine quality, gold thread, late Ching, um, and it's only up to $19.50. This will be in the newsletter this week. This is Coast to, Co Coast, to Coast Antiques up in New Hampshire. Uh, it's run by a guy I know, Steve. And he, he, gets, he goes to house sales, does a lot of auctions, and um, this is uh, right now selling for a bargain basement price. I ought to bring two to $300. But um, if, you, if you've always wanted to own a nice piece of Kesey, this is it. And it's pretty good, good size. This, is, this thing is a little, it's, uh, what is it, 39 inches by 10 inches. So it's over three feet long. It's a pretty good piece. And right now it's just up to $19.50. So uh, that's it. There'll be other stuff in the newsletter this week. Um, and if you're, on the, if you're on the notification list, we'll, you'll get told as soon as it comes out. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. If you haven't subscribed to us yet here on YouTube, please do. And uh, join us over at Bitamount and BitamountLive.com where you can shop and look and see what's there, things that are for sale. There's uh, hundreds of things over there right now. And um, a little bit more every, every week. It keeps building and building. Um, the sellers there are, are doing a good job. And this is, you know, we, we, we oversee it and make sure it stays running. But it's a, it's a site for dealers. It's their site. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad people are using it. All right. Uh, have, a, have a great uh, 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 weekend. And um, we'll see you all next week. Okay. Bye-bye.